JJ, I don't like one thing about this new wireless sound sensor. Why is that, Dan? Because it does two things so well. I can't decide which I like the best. That's right. It works as a wireless sound wave sensor to capture data at up to 100 kilohertz, and it works as a sound level meter that can record data continuously. I also like how it works with the scope and FFT displays of both SparkView and Pasco Capstone software. The sound level meter is both DBA and DBC weighting. That's important because the DBA scale measures the sound level experienced by a human ear. Can you show us an example? Sure. We have the wireless sound sensor connected to SparkView and a graph of DBA weighting on the top and DBC on the bottom. Clap your hands a few times and let's see the difference. Oh, you're right. The DBA weighting is different because it mimics the response of the human ear to different sound frequencies. That could be important for monitoring safe environmental sound levels. That's got to be the best application for the wireless sound sensor. I don't know about that. Have you seen what it can do using a scope display? Not yet. Show me what you mean. We can easily capture a sound wave produced by this tuning fork. Students can measure wave properties like period, frequency, wavelength, amplitude, and even wave speed using the software tools. Wow, what teacher wouldn't love that? That's got to be the best application. Not quite. Look what happens if we strike two tuning forks with slightly different frequencies. You can see the constructive and destructive interference patterns in real time as you hear it. You can't beat that. Maybe, but I know something cool you can do with the wireless sound sensor in an FFT display. Let me show you. When you dial a number on your phone, it generates a sound. The FFT can show us more about it by displaying the individual frequencies present. Let me grab my phone. See the two main frequencies? Two frequencies are present when you dial any number. The first frequency is shared by the numbers in the same row on the dial pad. The second frequency is shared by those in the same column. Students can discover this pattern and use it to decode a mystery number. That is one of the activities in the PASCO experiment library for the wireless sound sensor. You can find other wireless sound sensor activities, like measuring the speed of sound with an echo and measuring sound wave properties there too. That's what we like to do here at PASCO Scientific, develop tools to help your students learn in an engaging way and create ready to use activities to make it easy to use them. Thanks for joining us. You can find out more about the wireless sound sensor at pasco.com.